Welcome into this week's edition of the Climate Friday newsletter. We're going to be talking about wildfire smoke and how Canadian wildfires have impacted our weather here at home. And this is a trend that may be coming more common due to climate change. We're going to break down some of the impacts, how this impacts us, our health and our weather here at home. Let's break down the science and talk about wildfire smoke and its relationship to climate change and some trends that we are seeing with the data and how it affects us. So first of all, where are these fires burning at and how how is the smoke making its way all the way to Michigan and Ohio? It all comes down to the jet stream, which is a conveyor belt for the weather, and it brings that smoke well, several hundred miles looking at fires burning across the Canadian plains, especially in western Canada, but even towards northeastern Canada, also seeing flat fires that are ablaze. Now, all 10 Canadian provinces are currently drier than normal, experiencing drought conditions, and that's enabled those fires to proliferate. It is the jet stream that is carrying all of that smoke to the region, and much of the eastern United States and the Great Lakes is experiencing air quality issues due to that smoke. Over over the last several days this week, air quality alerts have been issued for a good portion of Michigan, Indiana and Ohio and out towards the Atlantic seaboard where some of those big metropolitan areas have seen significant impairments to air quality. For us here at home, that air quality alert is primarily for those sensitive groups, in particular the elderly, the very young and those with asthma and other respiratory conditions. Now that smoke is so thick and so evident that it actually is visible from outer space via satellite image. You can see here that murky brown color shows you where the wildfire smoke has drifted in and it's very easy to differentiate that brownish haze versus cloud cover, which is more of a clean white color there on the satellite imagery. Now, one of the biggest impacts that you have likely noticed is just how the sky appears due to this wildfire smoke. Normally at sunrise and sunset, the sunshine is bright, the sky is clear, and it's a bit more easy to pick out that sunrise or sunset. Now, a haze Easy sunrises and sunsets with a reddish brownish um, tint to it, almost a copper color. That is one of the characteristic signs of wildfire smoke high up in the sky. So why does it seem like the sky turns reddish orange when that wildfire smoke is present? It all has to do with how light interacts with those particles from the wildfire smoke. Now the sun emits um, light that represents all of the hues of the rainbow. However, those are different wavelengths of light and they behave differently. So even though we're getting all those colors, some of them bounce back to outer space, in particular those shorter wavelengths of light. Shorter wavelengths are associated with these colors that you see here. That includes the greens, the yellows, the violets, and the blues. Now the longer wavelengths, the oranges and the reds, those are the ones that permeate that smoke layer and are able to just pass right through the particulate matter. That is why you see those reds and oranges as opposed to the other colors. So that's the visual impact and what you've likely noticed over the last weeks. But what about some of the health impacts? Now, again, these are primarily for those who are sensitive and have respiratory conditions, but itchy eyes, very common. You may notice dryness or itching in your eyes. Also, just a general sense of fatigue due to prolonged outdoor exposure. A sore throat or a bit of a tickling in the back of your throat is also common. And trouble breathing is a bit more of extreme of a symptom. And that one has been noticed this week in some of those East Coast cities like New York City that have had significant declines in air quality. So how do we measure air quality and what does it mean for you? AQI or air quality index is the scale that we use. Now, ideally, we want that number to be as low as possible. A good air quality index is generally under 50 and the closer to zero. That means the more pure and clean the air is. Once you start to get in the ballpark of 50 to 100, that's when you'll start to smell a little bit of smoke, but overall for most individuals that is still OK within the moderate zone. Now, as of this recording, we currently fall in that category. However, if you're watching this on Friday, we might start to enter that triple digit range, which can be unhealthy for some, especially those sensitive individuals and groups I mentioned earlier. Once you start to enter that ballpark in that territory of 150 to 200, that is unhealthy air quality. And of course, the scale continues to go up. Some of those big East Coast cities 
degrees saw hazardous air quality conditions over 300 and that represents a much more imminent health emergency. Now we are not totally out of the woods just yet. In fact, Friday evening we will continue to see another plume of wildfire smoke shown by that coppery orange color and that means for you that on Friday it's going to be a hazy sunset and you may even notice a little bit of irritation due to those particles. So what, what can you do to take steps to um, not breathe them in or at least mitigate the symptoms? Well, some folks have tried wearing masks as we did during the pandemic. However, that doesn't always help because some of those particles are just so fine and so small and those are the ones that are actually the most hazardous. Now pollution comes in many different sizes. This symbol represents micrometers, which is a very tiny unit of measurement. I want to compare the size of these particles from wild smart spoke to a strand of human hair. Now just one single strand of hair that is typically in the width of 50 to 70 micrometers. However, these pollutants are way smaller than that. Some of the fine particulates from wildfire smoke are only two and a half micrometers. In other words, less than 5% the width of a strand of hair that gives you an idea of just how fine they are. And unfortunately, those finer, smaller particles, they permeate the lungs and penetrate the lungs a little more easily. And that is why those small particles are more dangerous. Also, there's only so much masks can do when those particles get really small. The larger particles, say 10 micrometers or bigger, those ones are a little bit less hazardous. They have a tougher time getting in the lungs. Now, as I mentioned, Friday is going to be the worst of it, where that AQI or air quality in index could be unhealthy for sensitive groups entering the triple digits. As we head towards the weekend, you'll still want to avoid prolonged exposure, especially strenuous outdoor exercise. But overall, the AQI is going to gradually improve. Now, the numbers that we've seen here at home pale in comparison to some of those big East Coast cities like New York, where the air quality index warranted a health emergency over 400. And that's the level that can be dangerous even for regularly healthy individuals when exposed outside for an extended period of time. Some of those symptoms when the AQI gets off the charts like that include the more severe symptoms like trouble breathing, chest pain and irritated eyes. Those symptoms are going to be a little more muted and subdued here at home as our AQI has only been generally in the ballpark of the moderate end of the spectrum. However, that heavy smoke out east certainly a uh, big impact from those Canadian wildfires. Overall, the brunt of the impact has been in the eastern part of the United States. Those magenta colors that you see off towards the Atlantic seaboard, that shows you where the smoke has been the thickest. Across the Great Lakes, we have definitely seen impairments to air quality. And then looking off across some of the western states and the Great Plains, they have actually seen a little bit less of the wildfire smoke due to the flow off the jet stream. So when are things going to get better? Well, the AQI is still going to remain poor. The air is not going to be very good on Friday. So minimize outdoor time heading towards the weekend. We'll call it fair. There is still going to be some residual wildfire smoke, but overall improvements will be had by Monday and Tuesday due to a change in the jet stream flow and also a little bit of rainfall. We might finally have some better air quality, and that is certainly good news for those of you who enjoy to spend a lot of time outside. So how is climate change affecting wildfires and what are some trends that we are likely to notice in the future? Well, first and foremost, the weather is one of the factors that has the biggest impacts on wildfire development and proliferation. Now, heat and drought are two conditions that enable these wildfires to spread. And regardless of what the cause is, whether it's something natural like a lightning strike or it's something man-made like a cigarette butt, heat and drought allow those fires to spread more rapidly and provide optimal conditions for wildfires and they also make it harder to put out. Now, sadly, this may be the new norm and throughout the summer season, you may hear us talking regularly about wildfire smoke in the forecast and how it impacts us and our weather. Bottom line, even though climate change doesn't inherently cause wildfires, it does enable the conditions that allow them to spread quicker and also become more intense. Now, part of the reason these wildfires are proliferating has to do with the heat that was experienced across Canada, especially during the month of May. Those bright burgundy colors show you temperatures that were seven degrees above average across not just an isolated area, but the entire country of Canada had an above average May and not just a little bit above average, but significantly above average. You'll notice anywhere from five to seven degrees above average was experienced across much of Canada, and that was also felt by a good 
good portion of the northern United States that was around three degrees above average. Now across here at home, Ohio and Michigan actually was relatively normal in the temperature department in May. Of course, we had a historically dry May, but our temperatures were on par with where they should be. Parts of the southeastern United States, and northern Mexico did experience cooler than normal conditions in May, but the overall trend that is affiliated with climate change, it's pretty obvious looking at this map that hotter conditions than normal were experienced across most of Canada and due to that heat that predisposed the wildfires to not only forming but also spreading again this trifecta of weather ingredients that climate change perpetuates that makes wildfires more common and more intense the dry conditions the hot conditions and also the wind that can spread wildfire smoke around more easily it has to do with all three of those combined that can cause those wildfires to be worse now we are still very much in need of rainfall in fact we've gone almost three full weeks since we got a drop of rain this video recorded on Thursday night was our 19th consecutive dry day. If you're watching this video on Friday, that'll be day number 20 Saturday, day number 21 without a single drop of rain. And since the first day of May, we've gotten less than one inch of rainfall. That makes it the second driest on record, a historic stretch of weather, the second driest during the spring season that we've ever experienced. And we are certainly very much in need of that rainfall, especially as we head towards the summer season and wildfire smoke is going to continue to be a player in our weather forecast. Thanks for tuning into this week's edition of the Climate Friday newsletter. We'll continue to keep you updated on the evolution of these Canadian wildfires and how they impact our weather here at home. And of course, subscribe at WTOL.com email for new content each and every Friday. Take care.